Hello and welcome everyone to another Heroes of Mana Magic 3 Horn of the Abyss guide video where in this one I will be going over <clears throat> what you need to know to play in the online lobby so yeah this is Horn of the Abyss I already instructed you how to install it in the previous video so if you click almost anything and you click multiplayer you'll be having access to the online lobby we can register an account with a few easy steps and then log in. After logging in, you're going to be seeing this screen right here. And this is the online lobby that we used to play online matches in. So we have currently the left side over here where there are rooms up of people looking for matches. And um, in here we have the chats. You can actually chat with people or you can be accessing the global chats for people. Apparently somebody got censored. Rip. Um, so yeah, people here are looking for matches, uh, just discussing the game and so on. Um, and on the right side of the screen, we have the player list. You can find every person currently logged into the lobby. And if you add them to friends, then you will see them in the top part of the um, list. As you can see, these people check marks are currently at my friends. Well, I added them as a friend at least. Um, the things uh, that that you these two numbers over here next to your name uh, represent your rating and your reputation. Reputation is increased by having friends add you on the lobby. So currently, 424 people have added me at, uh, in the lobby. Pretty good, lots of friends. And then the star one is the rating. Currently, I'm sitting at the 647 rating. That would put me. 108th on the ladder. I usually like top 100-ish, but kind of hovering that part. Between 600 and 700. That's where I currently belong. That's fine. <clears throat> so, that's how the... Um, that's what the lobby is. And now I will be trying to tell you how to actually use it in order to play matches. If, you know, you just recently joined, then most of the things that you see here don't actually make a lot of sense. Why is this guy's name black? Well, I'll actually kind of explain. Um, uh, then, what is Arena? What is JC Large? Rate Aut 100 Da. Okay, you probably don't really know most of anything that is going on here. So, let me go over the things that you need to know to start your first online match. So, if we look at the rooms, uh, the most simple of the rooms currently is One Punch Man looking for JC 1260 450 plus. So, let's go over from the end, then to back to the beginning. Whenever ha uh, someone has a um, certain number plus, they're usually looking for a player that is rated a certain amount. So, One Punch Man, currently being 55 rating, is looking for an opponent for 50 rating plus. Most usually people are gonna be able to, um, you know, you can't negotiate with them. If you're like 440, you, you shouldn't be like, damn, I can't play this guy. You should be like, hey, you wanna play anyway? And most of the time, they're gonna be respond with a kind yes. Then, most usually, in the rooms, there's also gonna be a combination of three numbers. In this case, in this room, it is 1262. What this is referring to is the timer of the game. For example, there's 752 here, 1682. And if we hop into any room right now, we're gonna be able to see that the, ti uh, that the timer, the way it works, is it's a chess timer that we usually use for the matches. And, um, the chess timer is comprised of three numbers. The first number is the amount of time that you get initially into the game to be using for your turn. The second number is going to be the timer that gets added every single turn, um, every single new turn in your game. And then the third number is the battle timer that you end up having for every single battle individually that you take. The battle timer does not get added to your entire timer pool, so you can't really abuse anything like that. If you finish the battle faster, then the timer just goes away. Unlike the start and the turn timers. So, there we go. So, based on which what kind of timer you would like to play, you should be selecting your opponents uh, like that. If you're new, then you're actually not gonna find ways to use up all your timer effectively. So, I would recommend starting off with a faster timer. For example, there was a guy there with 842 timer, you see? 
Um, that makes a lot of sense. Newer players, you know, they probably want to, uh, to play a little bit more action-packed, so they actually get to play the game, despite not doing that much in a turn. So, if you're new, I would recommend something like 842, that would be a wonderful timer for you. Um, so yes. Yeah, you know, as you gotta be moving up, you might want a faster timer, like 1262. This is actually my preferred timer to this very day. And people that are more thoughtful, or maybe just a little bit slower, tend to play 1680. Um, most of the top rated players also play this timer, of course. Um, timer will also depend on what kind of templates you play. Okay, so that is the timer. Um, you know... We have gone over what the 200 plus here means, what the free digit, uh, free numbers means. Now let's get over to the templates. There's a lot of templates for you to play in the online lobby. There is the main one is gonna be Jeepers Cross. It's very simple. It's easy to get into. You should probably try it. Maybe it's your kind of thing. Maybe it's not. It's gonna be fine either way. And then there's gonna be Jeebus Cross variants like Jeebus King. Or empty Jeebus, like this guy is playing over here. Empty Jeebus. This guy is playing Jeebus King. Um, I'm not going to be going over every single template in this video. There's going to be like separate videos that I will make for individual templates. Um, but every single template is going to require to play with different settings, okay? And those settings, um, if you hop into your room, um, you know, you might be having different number of players. You might, you might have AI based on the template, different types of roads. Um, um and different types of monster strength and the way you're supposed to find out what kind of settings to use for a certain template is we have this button over here in the online lobby online gaming rules we click it and then we go into this pretty convenient web page then let's say we were to play jeebus cross okay i could just navigate here template rules i could just check out um jeebus cross and then it's gonna tell me, okay, the map size should be extra large minus underground. Okay, we go back into the game, and then we have, um... Oh wait, where's my room? I guess I close it. Okay, so we select Jeebus Cross, okay, I'm supposed to have extra large uh, minus underground, so no underground, okay, it's disabled. Then we are supposed to have player count 2, AI yeah, count 0. So 2, 0. Then... There's no teams, there's no monsters, uh, there's no water, monsters are strong. Okay, let's make sure monsters are strong. Difficulty is 160%, yes, good. And the roads are fast. This means that the fastest roads are here. This would be medium, this would be slow, or dirt. So, okay. Based on the uh, recommended settings here, we have set up our game, and then we can wait for an opponent to join. We would probably have our title be something like Jeebus Cross, I'm um, JC, 842. And then, you know, we would say, new players only, possibly. And then, after setting up these rules, we would be waiting for an opponent, and then we can play. Um, next thing is... Um, okay, so it's gonna be up to you to learn the templates, maybe for my other videos, or maybe for I'm watching your favorite streamers play. But this is what they mean when they have... Um, when they say GC, 6LM, um, MTG Buzz. These are templates that people are playing, and they want to play. Um, so another important thing is gonna be the simultaneous turns. Um, Russian people have it as OX. I don't know, probably some abbreviation, but that's not what they mean. Um, this guy is playing with 117 simultaneous turns. This means that you both will be playing at the same time um, until the 117 mark. Until, actually throughout 117 as well. So your 1 to 1 turn is gonna be played one by one ever since that point. Many people don't really type out their simultaneous turns in their name, but some people do. Especially newer people do, because they tend to have more longer simultaneous turns. For example, anyone that's gonna be over 400 rating is gonna play with simultaneous turns of like 117, meaning that they will only play simultaneously for the first week. And because we are high rated, we're gonna be able to snowball so much that it's kinda likely that we'll meet by the start of week 2. On some other templates, we would even go further beyond and only play like half a week on simultaneous turns. That is also kind of a thing. Uh, but as you players, you might want to have a little like... You see, this guy is playing uh, Sims on 1-7. That's really good. They get to enjoy the game more by actually being able to play more because they have longer simultaneous turns. This would be a very prime example of how you should um, create your room. Jeebus Cross, extra large. Okay, he's playing Jeebus Cross. Uh, he has simultaneous turns at 27, and his time is pretty short at 8, 5, 2. 
So now you will understand what this person wants and how he is gonna be playing. Then there's also another really important thing for you to understand about the online lobby. And that is going to be... Um, that is going to be the downtrade aspect of the game. You know, when we play online Heroes 3, we don't really just ran randomly choose a town, or we don't random our starting town. What we do is we use the PvP options in order to do a town trade. So, I'm gonna go over briefly of what a town trade is and how it's gonna be looking like. So, we would have our opposing player here in the lobby, and then we would random do factions. We're gonna be using random versus random function. It's Rampart versus Fortress. If we were to have like the same faction rolled like Rampart versus Rampart, then we would click the button again to get a unique pair. We don't really play mirror matches. I'm actually not sure why. I mean, when we play mirror matches, we play mirror templates. So <laughs> yeah, this is that. So yes, we get a unique pair of factions and then we actually use our 10,000 starting gold before the game begins in order to um, decide who picks first for the sake of the faction and then afterwards for the sake of the color. So let's say this is Rampart vs. Fortress, I would bet 2k, uh, my opponent would bet 3k, and I would say pass. Um, then the opponent ends up paying 3000 gold to play his Rampart against my Fortress. Now, he might actually pick Fortress as the one that he wants to play, but most usually in this matchup people would play Rampart. So, my opponent here would be picking Rampart, I would be picking Fortress. But the town trade is not over. Now we would, now we would be betting for color. I would say color, and then I would start off with 1k. Let's say my opponent bets 1.5k, I would say 1.7k, and my opponent says pass. And then, um, in this kind of case, I would end up paying 1.7k gold, which is a really, really reasonable amount, to play my, uh, to play red over blue, and then the entire trade would be like this. I ended up paying 3,000 gold, uh, wait, the opponent passed, right, so I would be picking, I would be the one picking Rampart, the opponent would be picking Fortress, so I ended up pay, uh, paying, no wait, I passed, okay, my bad, my bad, um, it was all correct. I, my opponent ended up paying 3,000 gold in order to play Rampart against my fortress, but I ended up paying 1.7k back to him in order to play red, so the grand total trade in this situation would be 1,300 gold that I'm getting paid to play my red fortress that is then deducted from my opponent. So the town trade is complete and we are ready to play, then I would be, uh, click begin. I. Usually it prompts you with uh, another screen. Okay. Um, you would be getting this screen over here. Uh, when clicking the begin button, if there was another player in here. Then you would select the simultaneous turn to be on. You would probably have them as something like 127 if you're new. And then you would also protect your, your save with a password. Where you could randomize a password or just make one of your own. Um, we tend to play with passwords. I usually don't use a password because I'm a streamer. If somebody wants to cheat against me, they can already do so pretty easily, so I don't really care. I don't really encounter any money cheaters of my skill level because most of the people are pretty respectable in the lobby, which I'm very happy for. So, but, you know, during lower... I mean, just for your own security, you should probably use a password. And, um, you should type it in here when you're prompted to do so. So, one, two, three, four. And then you would begin the game by clicking OK. You have tournament rules on, PP neutral combat is off. This is a pretty mean function. Maybe I'll go over it at some point. It's actually kind of fun. And uh, then you have the simultaneous turns on. Make sure to actually enable them. If you have them typed out here, but this uh, check mark is not enabled, then there's gonna be no simultaneous turns. And then you're gonna be ready to hop into the match. Is there anything else in the lobby? Oh yeah, you can actually select your hero when you're betting for factions. If you're going all random, then you probably don't, right? Um, I would pick uh, Draken as my fortress, and the opponent Rampart would probably pick Eivor. So that's how the time trade works. Um, by the way, you can also sometimes re-roll pairs. 
Uh, but most usually that's gonna be costing you 500 gold off the trade. So if you end up pre-rolling, then immediately to the uh, gold pool over here, you would be deducted 500 gold that will then be added to the opponent's pocket when you do that. Some people have one free re-roll available for players as well. Um, you see, like this person has one free roll with ban, meaning that you can re-roll a faction and ban one of the factions that you ended up re-rolling. So let's say we had Rampy Fortress, I could re-roll the faction pair while banning Fortress, then fa Fortress would be removed from the um, pick choice, and then we would be rolling until we get a new pair without Fortress. The way this would go is like so. We would click on Fortress over here, and then by going for a new pair, we are no longer able to roll Fortress, no matter how many times we would do that. Then we have Tower Castle as the next pair. Usually we'd have to pay 500 for that, but in, you know, some rooms case, with one free roll, you would not have to pay. Um, okay, so we have gone over what the template means, what the timer means, what the rating means. Um, the simultaneous turns and um, the town trade, the way that we pick towns. By the way, some people also play like all random, and that's all fun too if you want to do that. Mm, but most people will, are going to be by default uh, playing with town trade, so that's how you uh, trade. Then the next, I think, last important thing that we have to go over is the resets in the game, okay? So. The way this goes is when we play online matches, we play with resets. And um, by default, every single player is going to be having one, I mean two day one resets. Or they can use both their day one resets to reset on day two instead. The red player calls a reset first. The blue player calls after. So this is about how it would go. We would jump into a Jibus Cross match with... Two players, thank you. And then, as the red player, I would have to decide whether I play the map or not. I would, you know, look around in my zone. Of course, I'm cheating right now. I see, like, a bunch of hives, and I would say plus. Okay? And then, it would be up to the blue player to say after. Let's say he types out um, opponent one-on-one. -on -one. This is how we call for a reset. A day one reset. We call it a one-one-one. Then you would just restart the scenario. And if you do this in the online lobby, the restart for the scenario function actually regenerates a new map instead of just resetting the same one. And then let's say I don't like this map, then I one on one. Then I have used one reset, my opponent have used one reset, we have one reset left each. And if I keep, then I no longer have to get reset, then the opponent keeps, and then we play the map that we already have. So that's how resets work. Red player calls first, blue player calls after. We have two resets in total. We can use both the resets to reset on uh, day two instead. There we go. And with this, you can actually start your adventures in the online lobby. Now you know what everything means, what people have here. Now you might not understand everything. For example, there's gonna be templates that you don't really get. Like MT100 is like a very specific kind of thing. I will not be going over everything in every single scenario in the, this video. I'm just giving you the base understanding of how the lobby works. If you're gonna be winning matches, of course, you're gonna be gaining rating. If you're gonna be losing matches, you're gonna be losing rating. Um, and so on. Oh, and by the way, to surrender, to forfeit a game, um, you just type GG into the chat, and then you actually get a prompt to surrender. Or you, like, click the exit to main menu button, and you'll be getting a list of options of what you want to do. Um, to either forfeit the game, GG out, um, and give your opponent rating, losing your own rating. Um, to just quit the new main menu, or even offer a draw. Some people ask how draws happen in Heroes 3. The way they happen is you offer a draw to the opponent, and he might accept. For example, we might be having a game where we have just both summon elementals to like death and beyond and it's not really a lot of fun. We have like million, million engagements that, you know, didn't end up in a decisive victory for either party. And, you know, we just call it, you know what, it's a draw. So yeah, I have actually the most draws probably in the entire lobby. I may have scammed a few, but um, that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, there we go. Now you can start your... Um, online lobby adventures yourself then what you what I would recommend you to do is what I would say you should probably try a game of GC maybe it's your thing maybe it's not you can start off here because it's pretty simple 
you type out JC, you're gonna be typing out something like 840. You can actually type JC extra large because um, it's gonna be more clear to people what you wanna play. Then you type out 4, uh, A main 8, 40. You would type um, new players only. And then you would uh, also possibly type uh, 1, 2, 7 sims. Something like this. Doesn't have to be the same formatted. You can format it however you want. People will understand what you want to play, what you're all about, and you'll be able to have a new game. If we host um, a game like this, then as advertised, you should select the template to be Jimmy's Cross. You should select the um, recommended settings from the online gaming rules. Then you should be selecting the timer that you advertise, which is going to be 8, 4, 2. And then after you wait for the opponent, you say, hey. Um, and then you, you're going to be randoming a new faction pair. And the opponent should probably understand it's going to be time trading. If you're playing someone new, then feel free to explain to him what time trading means. The way that you should go over it. And you'll be really good to go. I wish you luck in your online lobby adventures. I'll be doing template showcases very soon where I go over every single template, what they're all about, what's their strategies, and how you should be approaching them as well. So it's going to be easier for you to get into specific templates. My first one on the list is of course going to be Jewish Cross. I'll present it to you and, you know, it'll be pretty good to go. Thank you guys for watching and until the next one, goodbye. Check out my Twitch.